Hey guys, want to welcome you again to the Three Circle Podcast Beyond the Weekend. My name is Chris Bell. I'm on the pastoral team here at Three Circle Church, and we are kicking off 2024. I cannot believe that uh, here we are. You know, I can't believe the holidays are behind us, but there's always an excitement to that. And I'm sure wherever you're listening, whatever you're up to today, um, I, I bet that you are right in the middle of getting your new year rolling. Well, we hope to be a small part of that with this simple little podcast that we do each week. And if you're new to the podcast, Beyond the Weekend typically is all about going a little deeper into the sermon from the weekend before. Today will be unique, though. Today is just a pure kickoff to the new year. And so we're going to talk about what this new year could bring and a great way for us to get going with the new year to God's glory and also get to know another one of our team members here at Three Circle. All of that, hopefully, will be an encouragement to you. Now, the person who's on the podcast to kick off 2024 today is a dear friend of mine. Uh, one of the, Actually, one of the first people I met after preaching my first sermon at Three Circle 12 years ago was this guy and his family. He has a massive heart for missions. He actually started his own missions organization and has been a part of leading uh, our missions endeavors, in particular in, uh, in Central America for years now. Um, he was a part of planting a campus with Three Circle years ago while working full time uh, uh, with UPS. Just one of those guys that we love. He's a part of the DNA of Three Circle Church. It is my honor to welcome to the podcast today my bud, Rodney Phillips. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Man, it's good to have you with us today, Rodney. Um, I gave a little little bit of the journey there. First of all, I have to point out, we're kicking off 2024. You and I walked up to the podcast room together, and you're like a you're a model for Filson today, <laughs> one of my favorite all-time brands. You yeah. So Christmas was good for you. Christmas was good. It was a Filson Christmas for me. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people may not know about Filson. Filson is one of the great um, old-school Americana brands, started in the 1800s. And uh, and I think they're some of the best made clothing and accessories ever. What do you think? They're just they're awesome. They're kind of like like us. The older we get, the better they, they you know they look. So I'd yeah. appreciate you not throwing me into your same category. <laughs> what are you like? Twenty years older than me, man. Come on, no, or not quite, or, or like at least ten. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but man, I'm loving it. And you've got the hat. I'm looking at the jacket, and you got the tin cloth, right? Yes. And for our listening audience right now, the tin cloth Filson's kind of the, that's the creme de la creme of the Filson line, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that your great, great grandkids are going to be wearing that jacket. Yes, they better that, be. That thing's indestructible, they right? Yeah. Uh, the house burns down, the jacket's going to still be sitting that's, there. That's you know? right. That's right. Great to have you, though, here today. Rodney, you and I, I, I really, I remember the first time I, I preached, you are one of the first people with your family that came up afterwards, and, and immediately you were joking around. There was no, oh, you're the new pastor. I mean, you came right in busting my chops. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I was like, love that guy. I <laughs> love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep people humble. You know, yeah. I, you know I don't want to build them up too yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there no, no worries, buddy, with you. Uh, but immediately you and your, your incredible wife, Teresa, became friends for Nan and I. And then over the years, man, we've we've partnered in ministry in so many ways. So yeah. um, today, normally we do be on the weekend, but today we're we're about to start a new series, David and Goliath, this coming Sunday. So today, you and I are just going to kind of help the listening audience get going with their year. Yeah. Um, so it's 2024. What do you want to see happen? Let's start individually, um, because sure. I'm sure we all are going. Okay, what's my life going to look like this year? And so, what do you want to see happen personally in the life of Rodney Phillips as a man, as a husband, as a as as you know? You've now got your family has expanded, and you've got in, you know uh, uh, daughters in law and son in law and all this stuff happening. Yeah. What do you want to see happen in your year, man? That's a uh... You know, one, uh, like everybody, you know, I'm going to lose some weight, you know. Yeah. I come on staff, and we, we eat a lot here. Um, yeah. that's, that's different for me. So. Well, you know, conversations are often had over <laughs> meals, uh, yes. especially when you're out, yes. you know, because people in the church, when you yeah. do a ministry, like, hey, let's get together for coffee or let's yeah. get together for this. You really got to watch it, don't you? Absolutely. But, yeah. you know, on top of that, you know, we've got five kids and, uh, you know, a, brother, a son-in-law now and a daughter-in-law and, right. and two granddaughters. So um, <laughs> I'm trying to take the time to just uh, be with them, spend some time with them. I want to have that relationship I had with uh, my grandfather. We called him Papa back in the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did everything with him. 
I loved that man. Yeah. And uh, he died early. Uh, and so, you know, I was probably in fifth grade. So, you know, but I, I remember that man like, like, you know, yesterday. Oh, yeah. And I want that kind of relationship with my grandkids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and, and not only that, Rodney, you've always had, so that, that 2024 for you is yes. investment in my family. Absolutely. And you guys have an incredibly close family. Yes, we do. Um, you also have a huge heart, always have for missions. Yes. And when we say missions, you know, that's a word that I think gets misused because we, we kind of redefined 12 years ago. We said, Hey, we're going to become three circle church. Our name's going to be our, our mission and our vision. Right. Mm-hmm. And so for us missions, we are on a mission. Every yes. Christian has a mission, your yeah. local work, uh, place is right. part of the mission for you though. You've had a distinctly strong heart for global, what we would call the global circle. Yeah. And for some reason that landed in particular in Costa Rica, would you tell us yeah. a little bit about that journey? Yeah, that was a very strange journey. Um, I got introduced to missions, which I came, became a Christian late in life. So I didn't really know what missions was all about. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was somebody that, you know, packed up and lived in Africa. Okay. Full time. I okay. thought that was a missionary, and and that's understandable because that's kind of the picture we we yes. get at least in the American South sometimes. Correct. Yeah. And then the first time I'd heard that I could go uh, on a trip for a week, it it blew my mind. I was like, well, that's a, that's a thing. Yeah. You know that we can do, and um, I ended up we had a trip going to Russia. Our church did at the time, and um, everybody jumped on board, and I just felt God pulling me. But I had never been overseas. Okay. Um. So I was very much fighting that urge to go. Um, and then at some point I couldn't fight it anymore. And I, I went in and I told him I wanted to go, even though the deadline had passed and I was like, Hey, I know I waited too long and whatever, you know, if I can't go, that's fine. You know? Yeah. And they're like, no man, you need to be on board. So that was my introduction to missions going to Russia. And on that trip, we worked with orphans and kids and you know, you know how God just rips your heart open oh, when yeah. you see that stuff. And so I fell in love at the time with that, um, with Russia and, and the orphans, and so we went three or four times. And in the midst of that, we started coming here and then uh, got to meet a, a outstanding guy named Mike Sullivan um, yeah. that was adopting kids from from Haiti and wanted me to go with him on a mission trip. I didn't know that Mike – I know Mike Sullivan, obviously, mm. great guy. I did not know that he had been kind of the instrument that God used to bring it, you into that world. It was. It's funny because I, I worked for UPS, uh, and on my route – uh, there was this guy from FedEx that was a Christian, and we both had a mutual friend. And so he thought it would be funny to introduce us, FedEx, that's how UPS, and that's how it happened. I still see Mike Sullivan in his uh, FedEx truck yeah, all the time. I feel sorry for him. But, yeah, um, so, yeah, I, I started going to uh, to Haiti. Um, and, of course, we know from there we were introduced to the kids and adoption. And then in the midst of all that, it was now, weird. Now, people, the, the listeners – would not know that part of the story. So you and Teresa end up in Haiti, and you adopt two children. We adopt two children. Yeah, Max, uh, who is now 15, was six months old at the time, and I was down there with Mike, and we were installing a water filtration system in the orphanage. And um, I'll never forget it. The phone call came down to the orphanage that the 100th child had just been dropped off. Oh, man. And so it didn't mean a whole lot to me at the time because I wasn't looking to adopt. Um so that night we went back to the missionary's home and Max was there and um, I got to be careful as I say this because um, I got to hold him mm-hmm. and immediately there was this supernatural bond um, yeah. that I couldn't explain. And so I came home and uh, was trying to tell Teresa about the trip, trying. And every time I would mention Max, I would just start crying. And she's like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, I think we're supposed to adopt. And of course that, uh, that, floored her um and through that whole process so of this prayer, was not something you guys no. had ever talked about or considered we had considered adopting or had talked about it because of russia yeah um, but just didn't want to go that route and it's a good route for some people but it wasn't for us where we went through an agency and a child was picked for us and just yeah. that was not the way we wanted to go so no we were not actively talking about adopting uh and so when max was put basically in my lap um that started the whole prayer process and and god made it clear to both of us that that that's the route we were going to go and um and then Teresa was adamant you know if we're going to adopt one we're going to adopt two Mm -hmm. and that kind of floored me but through that process um we adopted two children and the process should have taken three to four years we were in that process six months because the earthquake hit oh wow and um, they were allowing kids that were in process 
to be released on humanitarian parole if you could come right take then. them to the embassy. So that sped up everything. Yeah, so that was a whole story journey in itself getting there because there were no inbound flights to Haiti at that point. So my passport never shows that I was there. Um, but we went to the embassy, um, did all the paperwork, slept in the embassy for like seven days, and uh, got flown out on a cargo plane, and life began. That's crazy, man. So it's a crazy story. Okay, so so you adopted mm-hmm. your two children, um, who are both amazing, by the way. They're okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then Costa Rica happens. And, and Costa Rica, and you're the one, you were the instrument that – that got me on board. And of course our church is deeply involved in Costa Rica and yes. we work with these amazing guys to plant churches, our student ministry. I've been down three times. My family loves Costa Rica. Uh, so, you know, I could go on and on about what I love and what God's done in my heart for Costa Rica and why it's going to be a long-term part yeah. of our global circle at three circle. But what about you? Why, why when that plane lands in Costa Rica, does your heart kind of light up? Man. Um, yeah, it's home. Cause they're, they're brothers and sisters now, but their heart is not to um, find supporters. Their heart is not to wait on somebody to fund whatever project they feel like God is calling them to do. If they feel like God is leading them in a direction, they, they're going. They're going for it, mm-hmm. and then then they'll let me know what's going on, and uh, and then we always have the opportunity to to help either with finances or teams or whatever. But they're not looking for a handout. Yeah, they are looking for brothers and sisters and, and partners that will believe in what God is doing in Costa Rica and, and to help them reach that country. So they they take action. They take and the, action. they we're talking about again because the listeners would not be aware. Probably we're talking about a group of people, a group of pastors, and kind of the linchpin for the whole thing was Pano. Pano. You guys met Pano. You and Mike Meganson, is that right? Correct. Mike that, Meganson was the founding pastor of our church, still yes, with us. Yes. And uh, you guys meet this very dynamic, charismatic, <laughs> new Christian. <laughs> yes. Yes. That was already he was already do like he, he didn't know doing. what he was doing, but he was trying to do something. Correct. And that that story all and to speed it up, um, that trip should have never happened. I was in a midlife crisis. <laughs> I was a surfer when I was young. And here I am, a dad, um, you know, late thirties, and and I want to start surfing again. Wait, are you are you saying when you get into your late thirties, that's considered midlife? Could be midlife. I hope so not. I'm, I'm for- almost sixty. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm forty six, and I was thinking, wait a minute, no, no, I'm still, I'm still a young man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, it was funny because back in the day, I just did a, a search, which is you know, always dangerous. Be careful with that. Yeah. But you know, Christian surfers, I had no idea because um, I wanted to meet other guys. I didn't want to get into that. That lifestyle, that that, that you know, the surfing because it is. really is a little subculture. Yeah, it's, it's a little dark, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's a believe it or not, there's an organization out there called Christian Surfers. And so I met this guy, um, and he said he was doing work in Costa Rica. Long story short, I went down with him, got robbed, got sick. Um, there was nothing to attach to, and so I went back, and I was like, I'm never going back to Costa Rica. I hate it. Yeah, it's dirty. Got right. sick. I hate it. He was going down again, and he said, "Man, come on back down." I go down, and it was just a, it was just a weird trip. Um, he wasn't attached to any church down there. He was just going down there freelancing, and I was like, "Man, this is just a waste of my time." And um, came back. So this is the second trip. Second trip. Came back immediately. You know, made that connection with Mike Megan's because his heart's missions also. And yes. I just I said, "Man, can we go to lunch one day?" I mean, this this is probably two years that passed after the second trip. And I said, can I go to lunch with you? I got something on my heart, and it's just, just I, I can't get rid of it. And so we go to lunch, and I said, I'm going to Costa Rica. I don't know why. I don't know if we're moving there. I don't know if we're supposed to start a church. But will you go with me? This is Mike Megas. Mike Megas. And he okay. goes, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so we go Mike's down. always up for a trip as long oh, as it's a yeah. short as long as long it's a short flight. Sure, yeah. <laughs> it was a short we, don't flight. Have, we don't have to get into that, but there's reasons. But the, he, he does not like long flights. No, he doesn't. Okay. So we went down and uh, met uh, Alvaro. He didn't know why we were there. We didn't know why. He was trying to show us around, and we didn't know what we were looking for. Um, but then he started telling us about this group of Christian surfers yeah. that were meeting at a coffee shop. And um, so we spent some time with Alvaro, and he kept bringing up this name, Pano, Pano, Pano. Pano's the leader. And I was like, man, you know, I feel like there should be a church down here because there's no church. And he's like, brother, you know, we can't go to church because if we go to church— they tell us to leave if we don't wear a suit. They tell us to leave if our hair is too long. 
Um, so they started this study at a coffee shop. Basically, Pano a Bible was the leader. Study. Yeah. yeah, and Pano was the leader. Um, so we left kind of feeling incomplete because Pano was in San Jose at the time, and um, Mike and I talked, and I was like, "Man, we got to meet Pano." And so I emailed. I mean, this is another day in time, but I emailed Pano. Um, never met him, and said, hey, man, if we can get you here, will you come? And he's like, yeah, sure. Meaning bring him here. Bring to him here so we could meet him. Yeah. yeah. And then so we got him a ticket, and I said, Mike, you know, he'd stay at your house because I'm working full time. And I'll never forget Mike called me, and he goes, hey, have you seen a picture of Pono? <laughs> and I said, no, why? He goes, I'm going to send you one. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my, oh, I'm so love. glad. Pono's got this huge hair yeah and he's just a great guy but if you didn't yeah. know him you'd be like wow you know this guy well, to me he's got the surfer yeah he's got that look man. he is yes he is the surfer he guy. embodies it and so he came the way you embody the filson <laughs> you know what i mean i'm telling I you, gotcha. you i'm gonna call filson i'm gonna be like i got your guy right here rodney <laughs> phillips from alabama needs to be you know and then pano should have his own line oh absolutely filson <laughs> should come out with a line of surfing gear <laughs> indestructible surfing gear and pano's their guy pano's the man but truly, if you see a pic, you look at Pano now. Now we know Pano; he's our brother. Yeah. And but but he still has that look. Still got the hair. Yeah. And and then Pano, you know, Pano is one of those guys. His smile gets to you before he does. Oh, you yeah. know, what I mean, the energy, right? Yes. What's interesting to me, and I love the story, is that you know we're 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 big theology people here. Yes. Like we we don't just go out there and start throwing darts at the wall. We're like, right. hey, we're we're a we're a gospel church and the people we partner with, we want to make sure they're equipped in the gospel. Yeah. So Pano, not only, you know, you could quickly dismiss Pano as being surfer dude, beach mm. dude. Pano's brilliant. He's Pano's very a yes. very serious man. Very. And we figured that out real fast and we decided, Hey, we want to have, we want to make sure we put the best tools in Pano's toolbox mm. for him to do something great in Costa Rica. And that included, interestingly, Three Circle partnering with him for his seminary training, right? Correct, yes. So yes. Pano went to Southern Seminary yes. in Kentucky. Got his master's. Yes, sir. I mean, he got real serious about it, did the work. And while he's in Kentucky and in the States doing all that, Mike Meganson feels God telling him to move to Costa Rica and kind of kind of help. Isn't that how that went down? Yes. So while Pano was here, Mike was there, correct? Mike took over and, well, I didn't say take over, but he went down because all these guys were young. Yeah. They were all in their 20s yeah. at the time. And uh, he, he went down and kind mentored of, her. Yeah, mentored, mentored and, and kind of became the, it was just an incredible story. I think Costa Rica is a kind of a microcosm of a macro thing we do at this church in that we, instead of just kind of bouncing around all over the globe, we've got a few places that we go in deep. Yes. And that's going in deep where you go, hey, founding pastor of Three Circle Church is going to uproot his family. He had grandkids. I mean, it was tough. Yeah. He goes down there for two years while we train up, you know, Pano and give him that opportunity. And then Pano goes back down and Mike came back. Yes. Yeah. And so at this point in Costa Rica, we're trying to plant as many churches as God will allow us to right. that are healthy, that are biblical, that are gospel-centered. And it's incredible. And my favorite, as you know, my heart's in Nassara, man. Yeah, with Danny. Danny, Danny and Nassara and what's, what God is doing there is just oh, – tell us about Nassara. So you got Costa Rica, the, the nation, but Nassara is this uh, beautiful, like almost uh, – what, what would you consider? To, I want to say jungle, but not really – rainforesty kind yeah, of vibe, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a lot more uh, – got a rural feel to it, mm -hmm. more of a jungle feel to it because Tamarindo is a real touristy it is. Um, area um, where – you know, Nosara still got you know the dirt roads and the and the forest, but the, the natural beauty is yes. breathtaking. Yes, in Nosara, yeah, it's a whole different vibe than than Tamarindo. Um, but you know, it's growing. But yeah, Danny, Danny has a heart to to reach his community, and his community's mixed because um, he's got the what they call the Ticos, the Costa Ricans, um, and then he's got a large American yeah. population, right. English speaking. So Danny's got the uh, the job of trying to juggle two different cultures. And minister to them. And he's doing a great job. Yeah. Doing a great job. And so give us just a snapshot of where Costa, Costa Rica is right now. The movement, the churches. Last time you were there, what did you see? Right now, their movement, um, both campuses, because they've got two right now, but they are both heavily invested in uh, some of the younger guys, raising them up, you know, with the plans and, and prayer to send them to different places to plant churches. But they're really investing in them with time 
and biblical teaching because uh, they want to make sure that they have that. And and as an organization, they're trying to fill that out also. You know, what does it look like to have multiple campuses or locations? Um, so they're they're looking through that as, you know, an accountability thing is how is that going to be accountable to each other and how do we work together? So they're working through that. And, and Blake's going to go down with me here soon, and hopefully he'll be able to pour into them on some of that. You guys are going down in February? We're going down in two weeks, actually. Is it two weeks? Yeah. So um, I, my prayer is that he's going to be able to help them with that. Yeah, um, I got to get back down there. Anytime. My kid, My kids' schedules will not let me make <laughs> I, it this time. I understand. You've been there. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I just love what's happening down there. And then with your journey, Rodney, it's kind of cool because you've been UPS a long time. Obviously, you never stopped being involved with us. And then you, a, a part of your journey is you started an organization called AIM. Yes. And what you basically do is connect people and resources mm-hmm. to other ministries and areas that, out there that you research yes. and you see that they're doing good things. Yeah. And so give us an update on AIM and, and how that's going. AIM is, man, AIM is something that... Uh, I never saw it coming, um, and, and it started through missions with this church. You know, going and connecting with these guys. Um, to me, going once once a week, um, you know, one time a year, two times a year, and then coming back the next year, I felt like there was just a bigger need because you know, there's needs all year round. Yeah. Um, and you know, so God allowed us to start an organization basically to help Pano and then and, and Haiti to connect those guys to resources like Three Circle that are willing to partner with them um, through teams and financial that can help them year round. Yeah. So basically we act as one, their accountability partner because we hold them accountable for, you know, what they do, what we send them, what other people send them. And, you know, and just that tool, that nonprofit here in the United States that people can send money through and know that it's getting to the right place and know that they're going to be held mm-hmm. accountable for it. And then, you know, we also, through that have had the opportunity to partner with other pastors like India um, and do things, you know, like start feeding programs, something simple, yeah. Uh, but something we always look for something that's uh, sustainable, sustainable where it's not a one and done. I want there to be a relationship with right. whatever village we're in with a pastor, a pastor that's going to connect with them and be there for them and pour into them. I don't want to go take, one meal and then go move on to the next village. It's, yeah. a, it's a long-term relationship. And that really goes back to our approach. We yes. want to go deep. We don't want the the mile-wide inch deep thing. Right. We'd rather go fewer but deeper and, and longer with people right. and with relationships and with the um, those local areas. Right. And we and then we take no ownership in anything. We, we will partner with someone in the Philippines for two years. And if they build up a support base of other churches through that two years, we'll pull out and mm-hmm. move on. I mean, because yeah. that, that's what this is all about. So we don't want to take ownership in anything. And, you know, the, the big thing is we want to feed kids physically and spiritually. So, you know, we haven't had it up the numbers this year where we reduced some of our feeding programs because we wanted, you know, the quality. But the year before, we did 55,000 meals. And so that's 55,000 times that these kids heard the gospel. Yeah. So that's, that's incredible. You know, it's, in the big scheme of things, it may not be a, a big ministry, but, you know, um, we pray that it's making an impact. Man, I love that. Okay, so your personal journey, though, you mm-hmm. you retired from UPS, yes. drove that truck for a long time. 32 years. Yeah, and uh, a great journey, great mm-hmm. place. The whole time, though, you were involved in ministry here. Yeah. Yeah. You helped us start a campus one time. Yeah. Uh, you've been deeply involved in ministry. And what's cool is you retired, and we got an opportunity for you to come on board here at Three Circle Church now yeah. full time. Yeah. And so you're with us now, and we, you're, you have such a heart for people anyway, but you are kind of overseeing the pastoral care yes. piece of what we do at Three Circle, which at first glance, people may, may go, oh, what is that? You know? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, but man, you got into it, and I remember it was recently. You sent me a text, and you said, I, I, "I'm going to get your quote a little wrong here, sure, probably, sure. but here's close." People have no idea what's happening behind the scenes. They don't to help people every day here through this church. Yeah, but I didn't. Yeah. It's, so, so give us just a little piece of since you've jumped into that role and you mm-hmm. see what is happening behind the scenes. Um, what what does it look like? What for the person out there that doesn't realize what's happening day to day to day 
through this church at these campuses in these communities. What do you see? Man, I see a church that is doesn't hesitate to help in any way. And I don't, you know, I'm not talking three a church like three circle. I'm talking church as the people. Yeah. Um we sure. have we have things come up, you know, sometimes daily, some mostly weekly, where there's needs. Um and you know, I'll recently we had an elderly couple, uh, doesn't go to church here. Just had someone reach out to me. Um, they were having a hard time and they needed something simple like depends and bed pads. Yeah. I put the message out to our people. They rain down of course depends and bed pads of course you know wheelchair ramps meals it just it goes refrigerators on. refrigerators for a, I, I knew that situation yeah. really cool and it was a you know it was a well i mean you know obviously we never use names but right. we we had a we were so grateful for our police and yeah and law enforcement and we we knew of a family because of a really hard situation with a, a sickness and an illness in the family yeah. And through some different connections, we found out this family needed a refrigerator. Right. And so, man, our people stepped up, and, and it's just cool to watch that happen, isn't it? It is. It's, it's amazing. And, it, and it's, you know, we get all kind of asks and needs. And and the great thing about the job that I get to do is I can't always say yes. Yeah. Um, but I always try to point them in a direction where there's other resources. I don't ever want to leave them with a no. I always want to leave them with some hope. Yeah. So um, Baldwin County has a lot of resources and, you know, I try to direct them that way because, you know, as a church, we can't do everything, but we, we can do something. And even if that's directing them to another organization sure. that can help them, then that's Okay. That's so your do. role is multifactorial, obviously. Sometimes it is we're going to jump in there and meet Absolutely, this need. yeah. But often it is there's these other organizations. Yeah. But I assume a big part of your role is knowing who those organizations are and where you can connect people. And uh, I guess that's probably been a bigger world than you realized as well. Yes, I've spent the first two or three months here doing nothing but making contacts with these organizations to know exactly what can they provide. Okay. What kind of people do I need to send your way and, and not, not send you? Because I don't want to waste anybody's sure. time and discourage them. So trying to develop those relationships with other nonprofits, other churches, um, to know who we can and can't send to them and how they can help them. Yeah. Because I don't want to give somebody false hope and say, hey, no, call this organization. They can help you. And they can't, you know. So um, like I said, I try, I try to leave them with hope, not right. just to know, you know, but... So it's interesting. Baldwin County, where we are locally, mm -hmm. is often considered one of the more affluent, one of the more up and coming areas of our entire state, certainly in our region. You know, the Eastern Shore is well known for being one of the more affluent and, and up and coming areas uh, in Alabama. But once you get under the hood, once you yeah. get under the veneer, I tell people it's just real life, man. Yeah. And there are people that are struggling and there are people that are having a hard time. And you are kind of the the point of the spear, if you will, locally for us to make sure that as a church, we're doing everything we can to meet the needs of people all around us. So I'm assuming what you would say, too, to the listening audience is if they, because we really depend on our people and their oh, connections, absolutely. their eyes and ears, yes. if they see needs, please let us know, right? Yes. Let us know because we want to figure out a way to, to help people one right. way or another. Right. And, you know, the big plan... Uh, for me this year and in, in, is to get our small groups involved with some of this because okay. there's so many, there's a lot of big needs, but there's a lot of small needs, you know, and I, I'm a, I'm a book of James guy. I'm okay. always about faith and action. Okay. Um, and our small group has been a huge impact on my life uh, to just want to pour into each other, but to serve with each other. Yeah. And I just think, uh, you know, this year, watch out small groups, you know, um, there's some things, and I'd love to see you guys serving um, with each other on a hour or two project, you know, on the weekends once, you know, once a quarter. Yeah. Um, because you know they're small, they're, they're micro churches. You know, they're fellowshipping, and and I think serving together. And I've always been an example guy. We can talk about our faith all day long, but if we don't show people our faith, I think they're just getting half the story. Okay. So you know, I, I'm, I'm a you know. So just you're really running the hands and feet of Jesus part 
of this church in many ways. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> well, Rodney, we are so grateful for for all that you do around here, and uh, uh, thanks for helping us kick off the year for the listeners out there who join us week by week. I'm sure they're encouraged to hear a little bit about what their church is up to. Um, if you're out there, if you're driving down the road right now or on your back porch or whatever you might be doing, um, and you know someone in your in your kind of span of care, your your circle of influence that has needs, uh, let us know. Uh, let us know because we want to be a church that does everything we can to help people. But also, you're hearing Rodney, and what I love about you, Rodney, that I think is inspiring for so many, is you're you're a real you're just a real everyday guy. You know, you you were working and you never stopped doing your day job, if you will. You just you. You said, hey, I'm going to be a dad and a husband, and I'm going to be obedient to. I'm going to, ministry is going to be a part of my life. And what's funny is you've been in ministry now for 20 years, but just now in the past year, have you made it your full time vocation? Yeah. So that whole idea of vocational ministry versus, uh, I don't even know what to do with all those divisions. Yeah. And you kind of blow them all out of the water. To me, you're this outlier that really shouldn't be an outlier. I think your story should be more normal than it is uh, for the church. Everyday Christians coming to Christ, getting on fire for Jesus and going, Lord, whatever whatever you'll let me do, I'll do it. Absolutely. And it's so funny how big time your, I mean, your yes has been on the table always. You're up for, hey, yeah, I'll give that a shot. And if it doesn't work out, that's fine. Let's advance the kingdom. Let's be a part of what God's up to. Yeah. So you're you're always inspiring to me. I think you're one of the best husbands and best dads I've been around. I, I love how you lead your family, and I'm really glad that our church gets to have Rodney Phillips as uh, as one of the leaders around here, man. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I enjoy being here. Love yeah. It. And if you don't mind, I, I I do want the jacket. So I'm looking at the Filson <laughs> jacket, and if you don't mind, I'm sure you got another one. Uh, uh, just you can leave that in my office. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney, thanks for being on the podcast today. Hey, listen, 2024 can be an incredible year. We are not here to tell you it's going to be easy or perfect uh, because, hey, we know it's real life. We're on this side of heaven. But you know what? We can be full of joy, full of uh, full of life. And Jesus promised to give us life and life more abundantly to the full. And so that's what we're hoping for and praying for for you. Uh, hey, start your year off in the Word of God. We recommend several devotionals around here. The one I'm doing this year is Paul David Tripp's New Morning Mercies. You can grab that on Amazon. It's what my wife and I are doing and a bunch of my buds. Uh, would love for you to jump in that. You will not regret it. Also, uh, one that I did a year ago was the Psalms uh, Daily Devotional by Tim Keller. That's just a few uh, years ago I did Experiencing God. It's kind of an oldie but a goodie. It's an incredible daily devotional. And then finally, I would recommend Morning and Evening by Charles Spurgeon, one of my favorites. So that's just some right there, guys. Find a way to get into the Word consistently this year, and it'll change your life. And then also remember, every one of us were just people. And Rodney tells a beautiful story of how God can take an ordinary, faithful man working a job, loving his family, and then do extraordinary things through his life. Rodney is attached to so many big God movements through our church that from campuses to um, to what's happening in Costa Rica, all because he just kept saying yes. He just kept saying yes to Jesus. You can do that too, right there where you are. So we hope this year kicks off strong for you in the Lord, and we'll see you next week right back at the same spot here at Beyond the Weekend, the Three Circle Podcast. 